Well, we're all packed up and we're heading back to Louisiana. Heading back to Natchitoches for this trip. Gonna spend some time at the Grand Accor RV Park in Natchitoches and hang out with family. We are breaking one of our own rules of travel and that is do not leave in the evening and do not pull into an RV park after dark. But we wanted to split this trip up into two days so Lisa and I both worked today and we got, had, got the camper all packed up. Motorcycles are in the back and we're about to hit the road. Now, we made the concession to leave in the evening instead of waiting until in the morning and driving all the way through, which is not bad. It's only a 10 to 12 hour drive, but pulling a camper, that's a long, long haul. So we decided to split it up and we're going back to the KOA if you watched our last Louisiana trip, the one where we hit Navarre and then Louisiana, right before Thanksgiving, before or after? Before. Then this is the same KOA we stopped at coming home. Since we know where the KOA is, we know what the campground is like, and we know roughly where we'll park, we decided it's okay to go ahead and do this at night because we know what we're getting into. I would not do this if I didn't know what the campground was like and where I had to park this thing. So uh, let's go. So we finally made it to the KOA in Tum Suba. It has been a crazy adventure, but it is way too late to go into it right now. So we will save that story for tomorrow. For now, good night. So, wow, where to begin with this trip? We uh, have a story to tell. Yes, we do. So as I said, we've chosen to leave later in the evening than we normally do on a trip. Our rule is we don't leave late because we don't want to arrive at a campground after dark because if you have problems on the road you don't want to be on the side of the road at night. We really make that a rule but for this trip going to Louisiana we didn't want to have a long day of driving but we both had to work on Thursday before we left on Friday. So we figured Meridian is only about a four or five hour drive it would be easy just to well, get, get finished working, have the camper ready, we jump in, get to Meridian, stay at the KOA, mm -hmm. get up the next morning, get into the campground in Natchitoches, Louisiana. It, which was is, gonna, it was gonna be ideal. And, and I will say, we felt like with the experience that we've had and the trips that we've had, that it was time for us to try a situation where we pulled into a campground at night. We felt like we were ready. We yeah. thought we thought we, we were thought ready. we were ready. Yeah. And now another reason we chose to do it is we'd been to this campground. We knew mm -hmm. the campground. We knew how to get to it. We knew what it looked like. We weren't concerned about pulling into it at night. So we leave the house. We from where we live, it takes us about 15, 20 minutes to maybe 30 minutes to get to I-20, just outside of Atlanta. That would be 45 minutes. Okay, 45 it minutes. It took us. Also, we left our house at 5.30 in Atlanta traffic. So if you know the Atlanta area, you know already the pain that we're feeling pulling an RV the size of ours in that situation. It was, it was tough. Yeah. So we get to I-20, get on I-20. We're probably on it for 10 minutes in traffic. Not even that. And we hear an explosion. Like a cannon. And she looks at me like, what was that? And I know really quick, we blew a tire on the camper. In 30 years of pulling campers, first time ever we've lost mm -hmm. a trailer tire. I will say the equalizer, I don't know if it's the equalizer hitch or just this torque. Even having blown a tire, it handled great. We had no sway, we had no issues. By the way, for those of you who are new, our RV is a Heartland Torque. That's the name of our rig, so just so you're aware. And we were able to get to the side of the road 
and as you can see from the video lisa was great she grabbed her camera and she started videoing it's one of those situations where i always think afterwards man we should have shot video yeah but let me also say in the middle of an incredibly hectic situation he is gold he was as steady as a rock and frustrated. i I mean, it, it was extremely inconvenient. It was very scary because of the amount of traffic and the camper was getting blown all over the place. It was not a stable situation for either of us, but he took care of the tire. I took care of Mason and a little bit of filming because I knew he would be sorry if, if we didn't have any footage of that. We've had too many situations where we regretted not having our cameras with us and so um thankfully i i thought of it it was a fluke <laughs> so one thing we learned and I, I am going to talk about this a little bit later in this video about the tools that we used on this trip what worked what didn't work like i thought it would and what worked well so but for now let's just leave it as we got this tire got the spare put on the camper got back on the road mm -hmm. we made it to the koa campground in meridian Ooh, for the night we felt like we dodged a bullet and yeah we were ready to crash uh very quick side note we got the exact same spot in that koa campground that we were in coming back and there was that post that we almost hit uh, when we put the slide out we hit it this time yeah we did yeah we got it we got it good uh, <laughs> So anyways, back on the road, life is good. We make it to the campground. We do wake up the next morning, find a Goodyear place and replaced the blown tire with a Goodyear Endurance, which is what I eventually want to put all the way around on my camper. So life is good. We're back on the road. All right, day two. Let me say real quick, because I have talked about my tire pressure monitor system on the camper that blowout we had was so fast and it just blew there was no time for that system to react no it, warning it, it just blew um and then about a couple seconds later it started screaming at us letting us know there was no air in the tire when reality was there was no tire anymore right it was gone so day two we're back on the road we get into louisiana on i-20 we're coming up on ruston louisiana which is where we turn off of the interstate and we start heading to natchitoches where we're camping we're not five miles from our exit at this time the tire pressure monitor system goes off all right so uh my tpms has paid off i just got an indication that i'm low on tire pressure and I'm gonna to try to get up here to an exit. Fortunately, this morning we replaced our spare tire, so I've got a tire to put on. So this is number two lost tires on this trip. We know we have a second tire now that is losing air and losing air quickly. Well, and let me say, I didn't realize the numbers that we were looking at on the tire monitoring system the numbers were going down, 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 down. And I said, what does that mean? And he said, that's air pressure leaving the tire. So we knew it's happening really fast, but, but it gave us enough warning so that we had time to gracefully pull off and not be in a... Yeah, and it also allowed us to get off on the side of the road before the tire shredded. We did yeah. get a little bit of minor damage to the camper, just some bent, bare, or uh, metal places on the side of the camper that we can fix uh, but no major damage with the first tire blow so the second one we got off the side of the road i checked it there was an exit a mile away from us so we just turned the emergency blinkers on went real slow got off the interstate found a gas station pulled in the parking lot fortunately we had replaced the tire that we blew the day before put the new tire on and was able to get back on the road but now we have no spare, but we're only an hour and a half from our campground thinking, all right. No problem. No problem, we'll get there, we'll fix this tire and we'll be good to go. Right, because there's no chance this could happen again. Okay, we're back on the road again. 
after our second blowout. Not blowout, sec, we just, the, the, it was just a massive loss of pressure. Uh, the valve stem snapped on that tire. Get back on the road, get to our exit in Ruston, Louisiana. Make it through Ruston, through this little town of Quitman where we're able to refill the, refuel the, the truck. So what, what we're looking at, to give you an idea of how rural, that's a hard word for me to say, how rural <laughs> the area was, it was nothing but fields of torn down trees. There were no houses, there was no <laughs> shoulder, there, there was nothing, nothing. So, fill the truck up, we have 37, 39 miles to the campground. We're golden, we're gonna make it. Leave Quitman, we get about 10 miles down the road. Tire pressure system goes off a third time. Tire number three. Pull off, we find a place to pull off in a little country church parking lot. Mm -hmm. But now we have no spare. And it's three o'clock in the afternoon. On a Friday. On a Friday. So we unhook the camper, because I have to go find a tire place. And I called around and there was a place about 10 miles in another direction that had a tire that would fit our camper. So I leave Lisa and Mason with the camper on the side of the road in this church parking lot. And I go to Jonesboro, Louisiana and find this tire shop, which I gotta say, uh, great tire shop. They did a great job, but they are not for normal cars. They basically do logging trucks and work vehicles. The tire that they had for me was a great big beefy, you know, 14 ply logging truck tire. And I didn't care. I bought it, brought it back, and you see you see the video, put that sucker on the camper, and <laughs> we hit the road again. Yeah, we did. Now keep in mind, we were working on the four original tires that came on this camper. The ones they say don't keep on there for too long because they're not going to last. You need to put better tires on it. We knew we wanted, wanted to put Goodyear Endurance tires on our camper, mm -hmm. but we were hoping to get this one more trip in before we did it. And, and in our defense, they looked great. Jerry is really careful about checking the safety of the tires before we leave he does a once around we honestly we didn't see any no any issues that would keep us from being safe and ruling out any issues yeah so third tire is on the the, the trailer we've got a complete mismatch of tires at this point get on the road, we are 30 miles, 29 miles from our mm -hmm. campground. We can do this. At this point, I'm really ready to drag the camper to the campground, <laughs> no matter what happens. Five miles down the road, you guessed it, tire pressure monitor system goes off. I think we have video of it. Yep. And at this point, it's after five o'clock, no tire shops are going to be open. We are in the middle of nowhere. There's not even a shoulder on the road to pull off on. So I turn the flashers on, turn you know, back down to about 30 miles an hour. And I know there's a little bitty town seven miles down the road. Saline, Louisiana. So we go very slow because I know the tire that's on the, that side that is still good is more than capable of carrying the weight of the camper. I wasn't worried about that. Stability was good, yeah. Every, you know. So I slowly pulled that camper until we got to Celine, found a place to pull off on the side of the road. There was a sheriff's deputy there, we talked with him for a minute. And I called my buddy, Alan, who we've camped with before. And he and our friend, Mickey, who we will be camping with at the Grand Canyon, he and his wife, Carla, 
Alan and Mickey brought one of Mickey's spare tires because he has the same tire size that I have on my camper. They drove the 30 miles, 29 miles, brought us a spare, changed it out, made it the rest of the way to the campground. So we are actually still today searching for tire shops. It's, it's the weekend, so nothing's open. The saga is not over, people. We're still trying to find Goodyear endurance tires. So I have a full set on the camper. I've got two on there now. So tomorrow is Monday. I'll be looking for a couple more tires. I think I have a line on them. So but wait, there's more. Just when you think it can't get any better. We go to Alexandria, which is 45, like 50 minutes away to go see my, pa my parents, uh, Emily and Justin, who you've seen in other videos, uh, our daughter and her fiance. We picked them up from the airport. We noticed on the dashboard of the truck, there was a little security light on. Hmm. Never seen that before. Hmm. Got to my parents' house, parked the truck, went out later to start the truck. Truck will not start. It's locked in a security mode. So now we've had four blown tires on the camper. My truck is still at my parents' house in Louisiana waiting to be towed to the GM dealership. In Alexandria, we're 50 miles away in Natchitoches. And I'm gonna spin the camera here just a little bit and I'll have Lisa step out of the way. You see I have my mom's car because I have no vehicle to pull the camper with. So this is what we're using. Hopefully we'll get the truck fixed this week. And I think Lisa had to run inside to check on something in the oven. But this is our saga for this episode. Uh, thanks for joining along. If you are enjoying our videos, please hit the subscribe button. It helps our channel. If you're enjoying watching the videos, give us some thumbs up. Those help us. And yeah, when we put out another video, which will be the continuing saga, we're gonna do more of, we don't know what we're gonna get into while we're here in Natchitoches for the week. It's a work week for me from the camper, but we are still gonna go out and explore. Uh, Emily and Justin are gonna join us here in a couple of days and we'll be having fun and we'll post another video. And in that video, we'll let you know what's happening with the truck if we've got four more tires or got all four tires on the camper replaced, uh, I think that's about it for this video. This has been, we, although we, we've talked about it repeatedly, how in the 30 years we've been camping, we've had such an easy time of it. We've not had anything no. like this ever happen. And so, I feel like we had it coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, how how far can you push it? Uh, 29 years. Yes, yes. So that was our saga. And hang on, I got one more quick thing I wanna share and that's coming right up. All right, I said I was gonna cover the tools that we used for the camper. Uh, most campers come with, especially if you have your spare up under the camper, they come with a, with a with a tool that you use to, to get that down. I couldn't find mine. I had put all of our chairs and all kinds of stuff on top of them, so I wasn't able to find it, but I was able to use a pair of pliers and get the spare tire down. But what I wanna talk about is, and I've done uh, videos on the Anderson levelers. Lisa got me for either Christmas or my birthday one year. This, it's the Anderson Jack. It's a lot higher, so when you roll up on this with one of your tires, in theory, it's supposed to lift the other tire completely off the ground so that you can change a tire. In my case, this was about an inch short of getting my, my tire off the ground completely. Uh, but this still was a lifesaver and I'll explain here in a second. So the first tire that blew, I grabbed the little bottle jack out of my truck that you just spin this and it very slowly cranks up and I was able to put this under the axle of the blown tire and get that extra inch or two to get it off the ground to be able to change the tire. But this is tedious and I would not recommend if you, yeah, it works. It'll get you 
out of a bad situation. But when we stopped in Meridian to replace the first blown tire at the Goodyear store, there was a Harbor Freight around the corner. So while they were changing my tire, I went to Harbor Freight and bought a 12 ton jack thinking if we you know someday have another issue not knowing that someday was going to be three more times the next day i would have a better bottle jack to lift that um, axle and let me say this was a lifesaver because i was able to get the tire up with the anderson jack and then use this to just get that that tire i was taking off off the ground a few more inches highly recommend picking up a jack like this to keep in your camper so there you go that has been our adventure and we're really hoping to have no more big adventures like that on the way home but again stay tuned for the next video uh, we'll share whatever we get into while we're here in the Natchitoches area uh, you saw we have the motorcycle so there's going to be some uh, riding and uh, we'll tell you more about what happens with the trailer and my truck and if we're able to get home next weekend thanks a lot guys take a leap of faith